Okay, proving triangles congruent by side, side, side. All right, the side, side, side theorem says if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So for instance, we know that uh, since DF is congruent to, um, in this case, G, or excuse me, IH, and that um, FE is congruent to, looks like HG, and then DE is congruent to IG. That tells us that triangle excuse me, FDE is congruent to triangle HIG. Not the triangle marking there. Okay, now notice how I uh, put my statements here. DF and DF, IH and IH. So D has to correspond with I, just like it's the first letter. F has to correspond to H. G would have to correspond to E. Okay, those are corresponding angles. All right, so angle D corresponds to angle I. And I'm really making a big deal about order because it matters a lot when you're dealing with corresponding parts and triangles. Okay. Angle F corresponds to angle H. So they're in the same position. Angle G, let's go ahead and switch colors one more time, corresponds to angle E. So angle G and angle E are in the same position. Okay, just like angle H and angle F were in the same position. And then angle D and angle I were in the same position. They correspond. Okay, so if you have three sides congruent of one triangle, congruent to three sides of another triangle, you have the two triangles congruent by side, side, side. Okay, so we're going to try some proofs here. Okay, using the side, side, side congruence proof or theorem, write a proof. All right, so we're given some stuff here, and I want to think through um, my proof before I actually start writing some stuff down. So I have statements, I have reasons. And I'm going to just kind of look at my um, givens. I have AD congruent to AB. It looks like that's a side. So they give me one side right there. I'm just going to write an S above that. I have DC congruent to BC. That's another side. So I have side, side. And I look at this. Well, it looks like I know that's congruent to itself by the reflexive property. Okay. And since I have that, that is side, side, side. I have three sides. So... I then have the side, side, side congruence theorem. So let's go ahead and write that out. First, AD is congruent to AB. That is given. Always number your proofs. That also gives me a side. I'm going to write that off to the side. And I also know that and since I'm going to just do another given, I'm not going to add another number here, DC to BC. That's also given. There's my other side. Put that under the same statement and reason. Number two, I know that AC is congruent to AC. AC is congruent to itself. And I don't have to switch the order of A and C on these because they fold right on top of each other. And that is by the reflexive property. Okay, so there's my, oops, boy, snuck it in on the wrong page. There it is. There is my other, well, maybe, there we go. There is my other side. So now I have the third. Triangle ACD is congruent to triangle ACB. By side, side, and side. All right. And then end your proof, you know, maybe put a shape or um, you say something at the end just to show that you finished it. All right. Well, let's go ahead and try another one here. 
Using side set side congruence, what additional information is required in order to know that the two triangles are congruent? Well, I look at this figure and I can see that I'm given one side congruent to another. I also look at it and go, well, I can get reflexive property right there. However, I don't have a third side. In order to prove these two triangles congruent, I'd need to know that RS is congruent to DQ. Okay, so notice I started with R because that's attached to the side with two markings. And I had to start with D because it's attached to the side with two markings. D corresponds to R. So I'd have to know that. I don't know that. Therefore, I cannot prove these two triangles congruent. This is what we need. Now, some would say, well, why didn't you write QS to SQ? Well, I'm, I'm not given that, but I can conclude that that's true based on the reflexive property. So I don't really need anyone to give me anything there. I know that. All right. Let's try something else here. Um, if I, another theorem is if I know that the hypotenuse of one triangle is congruent to the lay, or excuse me, to the hypotenuse of another triangle, and that the two triangles are right triangles, and then I have a leg congruent, then I can use what's called the hypotenuse leg theorem. Now, it's stated differently up here. It says the hypotenuse and a, and a leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and a leg of a second triangle. And the two triangles are congruent. And when I look at this figure, I purposely left out one of the pieces. Okay, I have the leg congruent, and I have the right triangle. Make sure you get the hypotenuse also. That needs to be marked. Okay? So hypotenuse is that longest side, the side opposite the right angle. And really, if you think through this, like in a, because you have a right triangle, you know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So if I know A squared and I know C squared, I could figure out B squared. If I know one side or two sides of a right triangle, I automatically figure out the third side by using the hypoten or by using the Pythagorean theorem. That's why this works. It's kind of related to the side, side, side congruence theorem that way. Okay? But you need to have, what I would do in my classes, I would say, hey, you need to have a right angle. Okay, so you need a right triangle. You need to have a hypotenuse and you need to have a leg. Those are the three things needed to use hypotenuse leg. There. Okay, so let's try some uh, proof like that. All right, so ABC is an isosceles triangle and CM is perpendicular to AB. All right, well, let's, I'm going to once again, statements and reasons. going to do two column. Um, well, looking at it, I know ABC is an isosceles triangle. Well, that tells me if ABC is isosceles, um, so that's the big triangle, I know that in an isosceles triangle, I have a side that's congruent to another. Two sides are congruent. Really, I should state that C is a vertex angle here. We're going to assume that, even though we should never do that. But um, so from isosceles triangle, I can get a side congruent. Um, I could also, if I wanted to, I could get an angle congruent. Okay. So I can get an angle and a side. Um, CM perpendicular to AB. Well, that's good to know. CM perpendicular to AB. I can get a right angle or a right triangle out of that as well. Or I can get a congruent angle. Well, if I have a side, which happens to be a hypotenuse, so I'm going to change this S to now a hypotenuse. I'm trying to go with ACM and BCM. So, you know, if it helps, maybe shading in, well, I need this triangle right here. Okay. Congruent to the white one there. And I know that those are good. Um, Well, I do have reflexive property right here as well. Well, I have a hypotenuse, I have a leg, and I have a right triangle. There we've got it, man. Hypotenuse leg and the right triangle. So let's go ahead and put that together. The first statement, ABC is an isosceles triangle. Okay. 
I'm going to abbreviate SOS loop there. That is given. But that given helps me to state number two that AC is congruent to BC. And that is by definition of isosceles triangle. Definition of isosceles triangle says that the legs are congruent. I really don't need that these angles are congruent, so I'm going to erase that chunk. Oops, that erased all my yellow too. Let's, uh, let's highlight that there, huh? All right. Okay. So I do have a hypotenuse. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get the right triangle. Okay. I know that another statement here, number three, that CM is perpendicular to AB. That is given. And I actually have to state then number four that triangle ACM and triangle BCM are right triangle. Abbreviated right there. And that's by definition of a right triangle. Okay, so by definition of a right triangle, if you have a right angle, then the triangle is a right triangle. So by definition there. Number five, oh, I'm sorry, I do have my right triangle, so I'm going to mark that here. So I just need the leg now. Well, I know that CM is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And then finally, the last piece, triangle ACM is congruent to triangle BCM by the hypotenuse leg theorem. That's the HL. There we got it. Okay. Well, let's try, I believe, just one more here. All right, now in this one, uh, given SR is perpendicular to RT, TU is perpendicular to US, and SU is congruent to TR, prove TRS is congruent to SUT. Okay, now it's really tough because there are a lot of triangles, a lot of shapes here. So whenever you have things embedded into a bigger shape, I'm going to go ahead and separate them. So S to U to T. That's one of my S, U, T. So I'm going to just redraw that triangle off to the side. S, U, T. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Um, there we go. So there's S, there's U, there's T. And then let's go ahead and switch colors here real quick. And we got T, R, S. So T to R to S. All right. So there's our other triangle. So we have... Um, T to R to S. So let's go there. And something like so. Now they may not look exactly congruent, but that is okay. So we go S. There's our R and T to R to S. Okay. So now based on what they've told us, um, if it, you know what, I, I wouldn't make a big deal about it usually. However, I'm going to redraw this one because. Uh, if you're just learning it, that may be a hindrance for you. So let me uh, kind of redraw that real quick. I, I normally, when I'm doing a proof, would not get really technical on my drawings. But I really don't want to um, make it so that they don't, they look so off that um, it confuses you. All right. There we go. I know they're not the exact same size and everything, but we're good. So. So I've redrawn the triangles they want us to prove. So I'm really going to focus only on these triangles I redrew. Okay, SR is perpendicular to RT. All right, well, SR, that's here, perpendicular to RT. That gives me a right angle right there. TU is perpendicular to US. TU to US, that gives me a right angle right there. And really, between these two things, it gives me my right triangles. Okay, so I have my right triangles that I need. Okay. Um, 
SU to TR. Well, SU is right here. TR is right here. That gives me a side. Now, if I can get a hypotenuse out of this, I'm set because I've got a right angle, which could, can make into a right triangle. I've got a side. All I need is ST congruent to ST. Well, if you look at your original figure, ST and TS are the same line. Okay? So this is congruent to that by reflexive. So we can write this up now. We've got our, our hypotenuse there. Okay, so our statement and our reason. So the first statement is that my given SR is perpendicular to RT, and I'm actually going to put the other one in there as well. TU is perpendicular to US. And that is given. And I can use that now to state that triangle TRF and triangle SUT are right triangles. Why? Well, by definition of right triangle. Okay. They both have right angles, so by definition, they're right triangles. Okay, so there's my right triangle that I need. Okay, just need a hypotenuse and leg. Number three, SU is congruent to TR. That is also given. Now, you can put all your givens under one statement. You don't have to do under a multiple like I am. But there's my leg. And then number four, TU excuse me, not TU, TS, is congruent to, now notice T to S has to be S to T if you have your corresponding pieces. That's why I made such a big deal of that at the very beginning of the lesson today. So we're way, 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 way back here. I made a big deal about order. <clears throat> I knew we were going to get to this problem. And when we look at it, T to S, corresponds to S to T. So TS is congruent to ST, or yeah, to ST by reflexive property. There's a hypotenuse. So number five, our triangle, TRS, is congruent to triangle SUT by HL. There we got it. All right, well, I think that's all I got for you. Good lucky.